So, the next thing I would like to uh, talk about is uh, uh, you know other theorems that we are familiar with namely uh, the Thevenin equivalent and the Norton's equivalent. The principle is very similar for a not an equivalent. So, the idea is the following we have an LPTV network and uh, this varies at f s. Uh, there are a whole lot of internal sources, uh, let us call this uh, uh, V1 uh, and then uh, another one V2 and so on and uh, we have the two terminals and uh, we have an external current source uh, say uh, I external right. So, by linearity therefore, uh, the output voltage here ok. Uh, is uh, uh, is simply given by we can use superposition the circuit is still is still linear mind you so uh, even though it's uh, uh, time varying so the voltage uh, v out is uh, uh, can be found by using superposition so v out therefore is uh, the sum of uh, of uh, two parts. Uh, so, let us call that V out A and V out B. V out A is the voltage developed when the external network, the external current is 0. So, this is therefore, the open circuit voltage developed across the two terminals. And V out B is this is I external where all the internal sources. are de energized that basically means voltage sources are replaced by shorts and current sources replaced by open. So, uh, clearly uh, if, if uh, I external is uh, can be written in phasor notation as uh, sigma k I sub k e to the j 2 pi f plus k f s times t uh, or other external of uh, let me see I think be careful with notation here this i external is the phasor vector 
I of t is this and therefore, I external which is the phasor which is applied at the output uh, is you know again uh, I minus k uh, blah 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 I 0 dot 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 I sub capital K. So, whole transpose. So, this is the this is the uh, the vector that carries the information of of uh, each of the of the strength of each of those tones and uh, uh, the voltage V out B in phasor notation is uh, simply nothing but a matrix So, this is I minus k I 0 I plus k and uh, uh, this would be uh, Z of 0, this would be Z of minus 1 blah 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 z of minus capital K, z 1, z 0, dot dot dot, z plus K, this will be z 0, this will be z minus 1, so as you can see. Um, this diagonal will be z naught, this is z minus 1. So, this is again what is called a toplic matrix where all these elements are identical, right. And uh, you can simply write this relationship as simply being the V out B phasor is nothing but the z the impedance matrix times i external right so uh, and v out a of course is simply uh, the uh, uh, when assuming uh, the voltages V1 and V2 are uh, at frequency f or at frequency uh, f plus some k times fs. V out a is going to be uh, simply can be represented by uh, its phasor vector. So, therefore, uh, V out in this general case when it is excited by both internal and ex external sources the V out phasor can be written as V out A, remember these are phasor vectors and I'll have size 2 k uh, plus 1 cross 1, these are all column vectors uh, and likewise here plus z times i external. This is 2 k plus 1 cross 2 k plus 1. All right. So, as you can see this is very looks very familiar. this is the equivalent of Thevenin's theorem. All right. And uh, uh, what this is basically saying is that the if you have a big box with multiple sources inside and you are only interested in the terminal behavior uh, of this box, 
one need not worry about all the details about how the internal elements are connected inside right all that one needs to do is be, be able to find uh, uh, the uh, the open circuit voltage right uh, that's uh, uh, this is the the open circuit voltage or the thevenin voltage and uh, this is the thevenin impedance which is found by uh, de-energizing all the sources inside and applying a uh, an external current and uh, finding this uh, uh, this conversion now the the impedance is no longer a single number it's a matrix because there are frequency conversions any input tone at f will result in tones at f plus k times fs so uh, the uh, while the uh, the equivalent is a lot more complicated than it was uh, for a time invariant network. Uh, it uh, uh, well, it at least simplifies uh, uh, this time invariant system uh, when um, uh, you're dealing with uh, LPTV networks, right? So, in other words, you don't have to worry about all the gory details of what are happening, what's happening inside the box. Uh, as long as you know the open circuit voltage phasor that is developed across the two terminals and the impedance matrix uh, uh, you know uh, this uh, you know z, uh, z as uh, we have seen here um, uh, we should be able to find the uh, uh, the term we should be able to understand the terminal behavior of this big network by looking simply at uh, uh, these two quantities right it is uh, uh, admittedly uh, much more difficult to find the thevenin impedance uh, in the time uh, varying case than in the time invariant case because if you assume that the it, uh, the matrix z is uh, uh, is truncated after capital k terms this is a 2k plus 1 cross 2k uh, plus 1 uh, matrix and even if you account for symmetries, you are now basically looking at at least finding the the upper half of this uh, this big matrix. So uh, unlike in the time invariant case where you know uh, typically finding the open circuit uh, the thevenin impedance is uh, is very straightforward, it is not so straightforward in the uh, uh, in the time varying case. Now likewise. We can also derive the Norton equivalent, where you have a big network I am just showing voltages here, but the network can have you know uh, uh, current sources also. And uh, We have uh, we were interested in the terminal behavior here. Uh, last time we said, I mean, uh, remember the uh, the reason why we put a current source there was, as far as the external world is concerned, you can model it by an equivalent uh, current source or an equivalent voltage source. Uh, what we're going to do is simply now we're going to model this as an equivalent voltage source. It's now going to be a voltage phasor. Right, uh, and uh, V external of T is simply going to be uh, sigma over K, V external of K e to the J 2 pi F plus K F S times T, and that is V external of minus K. V external of 0, V external of 
transpose so this is nothing but a 2k plus 1 cross 1 column vector and uh, the uh, um, the uh, as far as uh, the the current that is going in to the uh, network is concerned well you can think of it uh, as i in a plus i in b i in a is well you use superposition again right and uh, or maybe I think we should basically do the conventional thing where we do that. So, I in A plus I in B. So, this is basically V 2 and this current is I in A and we have another current source the external all the internal sources are 0 this is I in B all right and uh, uh, So, I in is the short circuit current due to all internal sources. And I in B is uh, the uh, current due to V external and that as you can see you can be written just like how we did with the um, uh, with the, uh, the, the, the Thevenin equivalent well you now have this is now I and B is minus Y uh, uh, times V external right. So, you can therefore, uh, represent the network by this matrix uh, sorry so this is y this is I in A and this is uh, V external right and uh, this current is I in A plus I in B. So, this is the the Norton equivalent. Uh, I in A, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah, thank you. Indeed. Right. So, this is the Norton equivalent. with y is a 2k plus 1 cross 2k plus 1 matrix all right and uh, just to put everything in one place you can as well 
think of it as a Thevenin equivalent. V uh, out A Right, and uh, what can we say about the relationship between uh, uh, V out A, I in A, Y and Z? Well, if you leave the box open, uh, the voltage developed across the box is nothing but uh, is uh, V out A, and that's nothing but uh, uh, Y inverse. times i in a and why is it y inverse times y in a well the voltage across the uh, uh, let us say in other words let us keep the circuit open. So, we basically have both are the same both represent the same network. So, however, however you represent the network. Uh, this is Z, this is the Thevenin equivalent and you have the Norton equivalent which is uh, I am simply going to call this V O C just to be I call this I S C the short circuit current and uh, this is Y right, and these two, of course, must uh, since they represent the same network, you must have the same open circuit voltage developed, and the voltage uh, open circuit voltage is VOC here. Now this must also therefore be VOC, and uh, so if the voltage is V then the current that is being drawn uh, by this uh, 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 admittance is nothing but uh, V O C times Y, the Y matrix times V O C that should be give I S C, right. The relationship is very similar to what one uh, sees with uh, a time uh, invariant network where there the ratio of uh, the short circuit current is uh, is uh, the uh, uh, the short circuit admittance uh, multiplied by uh, the open circuit voltage right uh, alternatively you can uh, uh, you can equate the currents uh, when you short uh, the output and therefore uh, what do you see well this current is going to be uh, VOC uh, sorry um, the current is going to be ISC right because this current is ISC and yeah. I S C times the Z matrix should give us V O C. Does it make sense? So, therefore, you put these two together I S C must be Y times V O C, uh, which happens to be Y times Z times I S C and therefore, 
must be y times z times i s c. So, what can we conclude? Y z is the identity matrix. And therefore, z is the inverse of y. Okay. And this again is uh, very familiar because in a time invariant network, we know that the Thevenin resistance and the Norton admittance are simply reciprocals of each other. Now, z and y are matrices and one is the inverse of the, the other. All right.